Hey guys, I'm going to take you on a journey in this video, not the band journey, but I'm going to take you on this journey and I'm going to show you everything I did to record my very first album. And I really think a lot of the things that we're going to go through is going to help you if this is something that you want to do as well. All right, guys, so I'm going to take you through every component. Hopefully I can remember all this stuff. I do have it written down over here in the notepad. But I'm going to give you everything from the guitars I use for guitars and bass, uh, how I got my guitar tones, the recording software interface, and even what I did for drums for the album Apocalyptic Dreams, which I released in 2013. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and ding that little bell. Now just a quick backstory here, before we get into the guitars and tones and hardware and software, all those juicy details that I'm going to share with you. So Apocalyptic Dreams, that album was released in December 2013, but I actually started writing the riffs for that and the music probably, I'd say, late 2010, early 2011. Now, that time, I think around 2011-ish, is when I started getting into uh, software recording. So I had two things kind of going against me. For one, I was brand new to the world of software recording. You know, the last recording system I had, which was like in the early mid-90s, was that Fostex 8-track. I think it was called the Fostex DMT-8 8-track system. And just this little standalone mixing board you just plugged into and started recording. But anyway, so I was brand new to software recording. I was a little intimidated by that. And um, the second thing was my wife and I lived in this apartment on the third floor. So, you know, it wasn't like I could make a lot of noise. Now, I didn't realize I would be, you know, recording most of my music with headphones on at that time. Again, I'm brand new to software recording. So anyway, I started doing some research uh, on like interfaces and just all the stuff that I needed because you know when you're first starting out let's say you're just brand new software recording you're like you have no no clue like what goes where like okay well how do I play my guitar through my computer so you have to research that so anyway you know I did my research and I ended up buying I still have this thing and this is the first piece where now we're getting into the equipment here that I use for apocalyptic dreams my very first album, which I'm very proud of, by the way. I love that album. Anyway, so I bought the PreSonus USB interface. I think that's what's called. Audio Box. I'm sorry. The PreSonus Audio Box. Some of this is scratched off here. The PreSonus Audio Box USB. Just a very simple little interface with, uh, you know, with two inputs here, which I only use one of them. Actually, I take that back. I use two inputs, and I'll show you why in a second here, or in a minute. At that time, I didn't realize, I didn't read the good fine print that that thing came with software. So while that was being shipped to me, I went ahead and bought the Reaper software. So I started, you know, once I got the interface, you know, I, I started digging into Reaper, and of course, you know, connected the two, and started learning Reaper. And, you know, Reaper's a great program, it's an awesome program, pretty easy to use for the most part, but just the whole, uh, the whole newness of learning this software recording, I just couldn't wrap my head around it at first, you know. Uh, so anyway, I finally figured out that this thing over here, this interface, came with a CD. So I'm like, hmm, what is this? Oh, it's recording software. So <laughs> this little box right here, the, the PreSonus Audio Box, again, the Audio Box uh, USB interface, it came with what's called the artist version of PreSonus Studio One. And most interfaces, I didn't know this back then either, but most uh, audio interfaces that you buy for studio recording, they're gonna come with like the light version of their software. And what that means a lot of times, at least in, in this case, was that you can use that software to record with and you can even use all the plugins. There's like an array of like effects and plugins that come with the software, you know, the light version of that, but you can't use third party plugins. And I'm gonna get to that in a second here as well. So anyway, I started using, you know, PreSonus software with their interface because I just assumed that it would just be an easier uh, match. You know what I mean? I'm using the same software and hardware, or, you know, hardware and software by the same company. That just made more sense. So I stopped using Reaper. So. PreSonus Audio Box interface, uh, Audio Box USB interface, and PreSonus Studio One. So now you have two components I use to record apocalyptic dreams with. Very simple and a very like uh, cost efficient way to start recording. Now at that time I did have a little Toshiba laptop, and I think that laptop had like four gigs of RAM. 
I think when I bought the laptop, I made sure that it was upgraded because back then, you know, this again, this is back in like 2011. The whole year of 2011 was the time I was really accumulating the gear to record Apocalyptic Dreams. Um, but yeah, so I had this Toshiba laptop and it was, you know, just powerful enough to run the studio just fine. I mean, I never had any issues with that. So now let's jump to guitar tones, okay? So at that time I had, and I'm gonna, sh I'll share with you what I use for Apocalypse Dreams, of course, but I wanna go back in time just a little bit because at first I had the Pod XT Live by Line 6. And a lot of you probably saw some of my videos. Um, I'll post one of them up there if you guys care to watch it. I'll leave that in the YouTube description as well. So, you know, if you don't want to leave this video right now, which I don't want you to, I want you to hang around and see the rest of this. So I'll also leave that link in the description. And I was playing with the Pod XT Live. I think I bought that used. I met this dude at a gas station. I found it on Craigslist, you know, I'm like, hey, okay, I'll buy this. I, I wasn't really happy with the tones I was getting. You know, so I started also messing around with plugins. As I got more into studio recording and software recording, I started playing around with plugins and downloading these free plugins. Uh, one specific one that I really liked, and I almost used this for Apocalyptic Dreams, was Lepo's Legion amp. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, I've actually got a video on that tones from way back, so I'll put that link in the YouTube description as well. I'm gonna have a lot of links in the description of this video. Uh, so you guys can go check out some of those, you know, references from way back. They're just really old videos that I created. Long story short, I ended up uh, ended up selling the XT Live unit because I just, you know, it was like, okay, well, the plugins sound better than the XT Live. But then I ended up buying this thing, the Pod HD 500 from Line 6. So actually, I, I can't believe I still have this thing. Um, I'm not going to have it for too much longer because I am actually donating this to a church and I'm hoping that it will get uh, get some use out of that and hopefully somebody that can't afford gear uh, that plays in that church will you know will be able to play through this unit and it will do some good. That's gonna be going bye bye real soon. I'll see you later HD 500. So I started dialing in tones you know with the HD 500 and I was really frustrated with that at first as well and I was in like guitar tone hell for, I don't know, several, several months. I would say at least six, maybe eight months, and I just could not figure out what tone I was gonna use for Apocalyptic Dreams. You know, Apocalyptic Dreams, of course, is kind of a, um, I wanna say dark album, but not like in some satanic way or whatever, you know, not, I've never been into that sort of thing. But it was more of like a, a sinister, eerie, sinister tone to it, but also one of that classic metal style as well. So I was looking for a very specific tone and I just was not finding it. And one day, after being so frustrated with the HD 500, I somehow discovered their, what they call the Angel F-Ball. And it's based off, it's, it's uh, simulated after the Engel Fireball amp. And I'm like, wow, you know, this actually sounds pretty good. I messed around with the tone some and I'm like, okay. And long story short, I ended up using the Angel F-Ball in the HD 500 to record Apocalyptic Dreams with. That's, in fact, that's like the only tone I used for all the, the metal rhythms and the metal leads as well. Now, I also use that unit's uh, clean tones. There's some clean and ambient parts in a lot of the songs in Apocalyptic Dreams. Like the song, The Healing, um, that's uh, one of the latter tracks on the album. I can't remember which track number that is, but that's got some clean tones to it, and I used the HD 500 for that. I think it was like a, a Fender style amp. And then there's some ambient tones in some of the other songs there. And I'm trying to think, I think the song Apocalyptic Dreams, I believe that's track four, I think that's got some of that. And I have a song called Out There on the album and that's got like a, a bridge breakdown where it's got this really cool ambient spacey tone. And all those effects, all of that stuff came from the HD 500. Now, I told you I would share why I use two inputs. I mean, it's just me recording, so you only need one input, right? So no. I use the two, I want to go back to this, I use both of these inputs with the HD 500. So what I did was I plugged two cables in here and of course the other two went into the left right of the HD 500 and then I just panned, hard panned those, uh, those tracks in the studio so that I got that true stereo sound. I don't know if there's another way to get that than, other than what I did, but that worked out quite nicely. Now on that note, no pun intended, 
For everything else that wasn't, you know, wasn't clean tones with a stereo chorus or didn't have that ambient effect where I wanted that real wavy sound coming in and out of both speakers, for everything else, my main lead guitar tracks and, and the metal rhythm guitars, I only use one input for that. But my rhythm tracks, my rhythm guitar tracks, I would record one track, and a lot of you who have been following me, you guys already know my method for recording rhythms, but I would record one rhythm guitar track, right, for that song, and then I would hard pan that track to the left. Then I would open up a second track, and I'd record another rhythm guitar track, and once I'm done with that, I'd hard pan that to the right. Actually, before I record that track, I would go ahead and pan it to the right so that I'm recording, I've, you know, I can hear that one guitar in this ear here, and I can hear the one I'm recording with that in this ear here. So it gives you just that full stereo sound, which is really cool. Now there's a really old piece of equipment I'm gonna show you. When you're recording at home, and especially if you're in an apartment, the one crucial thing you have to have is headphones. This is how you're gonna record the majority of your music, and it's how you're gonna mix it if you're doing your own mixing. So these are like some really old AKG K301 headphones. And let me tell you guys, these are awesome headphones. I don't think they're that expensive. Um, these little things like right here are falling off the ears pieces. I'm sure there's some way to fix that. But anyway, uh, I don't use them so much these days. I've got other headphones I use, but these were really awesome. They came in so handy. In fact, actually, I think I, I can't remember if I bought these during the time I bought the studio or if I had them from years prior, I don't remember, but I do know they're quite old but they really, really did the trick for like recording and mixing and all that. I was like, man, I was so, so impressed with those headphones. And again, they weren't super expensive headphones. Now, I did have these KRKs you see behind me. These are probably one of the cheaper KRK speakers, monitors that you can get. They are the Rockets, the G5 Rockets, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I still use them today, guys. I have not updated my monitors since then, since like, you know, 2010 or 11 whenever I bought the studio gear now some people may give me crap for having the same monitors and not upgrading I you know I'm one thing I'm not a gear junkie for one okay I don't I'm not the kind of person that says well you can always have to upgrade to the latest and greatest look there's albums that were recorded with really old equipment that sound far better than some of the stuff that's out there that's recorded with the latest and greatest that's number one number two this is specific to monitors your ears become used to a certain sound. So if you've got a pair of monitors and your mixes are turning out really nice and you've got other people that are quick to critique your, your sounds, right? You, need, you don't need friends, in other words, saying, yeah, man, that's your album, bro, it sounds great. No, you need people that's gonna say, no, this is too high, that's too low. You need someone that's really gonna give you an honest opinion. So when you've got those types of people telling you that your mixes sound great, then whatever you're doing is working. Because here's what will happen, if you up, and I'm not saying don't upgrade guys, I'm not saying don't, do, but what I'm saying is don't upgrade just to upgrade, right? You know, do your research and know what you're getting into because I could change out these monitors right now, but you know what? My mixes might start to suck because my ears are used to these. Now, it doesn't mean I won't upgrade at some point, but I will have to spend a lot of time if and when I do that with those monitors to get my ears used to that sound. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So yes, the KRKs, that's what I was using as well when I recorded my very first album. Now let's talk about the guitar, and a lot of you already know this. I recorded Apocalyptic Dreams basically with one guitar, and that was my ESP LTD M1000 Deluxe. Now, I got this guitar, um, this was like really a godsend. I got this guitar because I really wanted something that was going to be metal. And you know, the, the LTD M1000 Deluxe, it's got the EMG pickups in it, the active pickups, and you know, it, it was exactly what I was looking for. I almost used my Ibanez at that time, and I still have this guitar obviously, because it's right here. <laughs> I, I have the Ibanez Prestige, this is the RG1570. Now this is a nice guitar, and uh, you know back in those days before I started accumulating my studio gear, my new gear, um, I was electric guitarless for a little while, which that's like death, and I don't mean the metal band death, but like death is in you should die if you don't have an electric guitar in your guitar player, you know, especially a metal guitar player. But my dear friend, and I consider him a brother, Tom, 
He actually sold this to me for really, really cheap price, just so I'd have a guitar. So Tom, if you see this dude, thank you. I will uh, always keep this in the family, by the way. That was kind of the, the deal we made there. But I ended up using, I actually did use this on another album after Apocalyptic Dreams, and maybe I'll do a video on that at some point. But I did end up going with my ESP LTD M1000 Deluxe for Apocalyptic Dreams. Now, what did I do for bass? At that time, I had this five string Dean bass. I don't remember the model number or anything like that. I bought it used from someone on Craigslist. That's the bass I use. I don't have that bass anymore. I actually gave that bass away to a friend. Uh, it was just one of those things where I just had this deep voice inside, just like, hey, give this to this person. Uh, so I listened to that voice and I did, and, and I'm glad, I did. I'm very happy about that decision. And, uh, and I know my friend has gotten quite a, quite a bit of use out of that. So anyway, that's what I recorded um, the bass tracks with. Now, there's a deeper level, no pun intended, for the bass tracks, and that's what did I use for the tone. And I kinda got stumped on the bass tone, and here's, here's where a lot of us guitar players may go wrong. We spend so much time on our guitar tone, but then when it comes to laying down a bass track, it's like, eh, Let's just plug it in and, and use this and throw something down real quick. But you know, if you want your album to sound good, if you want it to sound professional, you need to pay attention to your bass tone. So what I did, I knew I didn't want to mic a live amp because again, I'm in an apartment at this time. And, uh, and I also was kind of like, you know, I wasn't really happy with the HD 500 bass amp tones. And I can't remember if there's, I think there is a bass amp in there or there's, or there's something you could use for bass in there, but I just wasn't happy with it. And I tried different plugins, wasn't happy with those. And I don't think in those days there, there were a lot of bass guitar plugins that were good. So here's what I did. I utilized what I had in Studio One, in Studio One Pro. Now, I don't think I told you guys this, but uh, obviously at some point I upgraded from the artist version, the light version of Studio One to the professional version. I think that was a couple hundred a couple hundred bucks to upgrade that, so I did that so I could use the plugins. I ended up creating my own little chain of plugins for the bass guitar. I messed around with this for a long time, but I don't quite remember what all I have had, and I wish I had saved that. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> uh, so if I recall though, I know I had an EQ plugin, I know I had a channel strip plugin, I think I had some sort of compressor and something else, but I had created this really cool chain of plugins in Studio One, you know, plugins that came with the program, and I came up with what I thought was a really nice sounding bass guitar tone for Apocalyptic Dreams, and I was just really happy with that. So that's what I did for bass. And on that note, I want to encourage you guys to. Um, to if you mess around in your DAW, mess around in your recording software, and check out the plugins that come with it, especially nowadays. Uh, a lot of these programs these days, they come with like pretty good sounding plugins, like for compression and reverb and, and effects and EQs and all that stuff. So I encourage you guys to really play around with those plugin, plugins that your software already comes with before you go out buying you know, plugins from other sources because a lot of times you're gonna have everything you need just right there. Now you're probably wondering, Jason, dude, what did you do for drums? So I am not a drummer for one, I think that's uh, known. Uh, I can play drums because all guitar players can play drums, right? <laughs> we all think we're great drummers, you know? Hey, let me play the drums on this song. But no, um, you know, I couldn't play drums well enough, of course, to, to record this album. There's a lot of double bass that I wanted in, in certain parts of this album. I also didn't have the funds to hire a drummer, you know, and uh, so I was kind of between a rock and a hard place. And, you know, of course, there's these program drums that you have, and that just, that was intimidating, guys, to me. You know, that was intimidating as crazy. I'm like, okay, I just learned how to use my recording software and now you want me to learn this entire drum program? So I just did some searching, you know, I was searching for drum solutions and I eventually stumbled on this company called Beta Monkey and they had a series of drum loops called Double Bass Mania. And I've got two, two Double Bass Mania programs, right? Well, not programs, these are not programs, by the way. Um, these are actually and I'll show you, this just comes with a CD. They probably do like a digital download these days. Again, this is back in like 2011, maybe even 12 at this point. 
but they came with a CD back then, you know. You got a CD and you would, of course, put it in your, your drive there and you would just download the loops. Now, the funny thing is, or the, the interesting thing rather, is that these are actually recorded drums. They're not fake drums. These loops were recorded in a studio, a professional studio. Okay, so you're getting real drums right here. You've just got like thousands of loops to kind of go through and compile to fit your track. Now, these come in different BPMs. So I, I've got two here. I've got beta, uh, double bass mania two and four. So I'll put a link to that video about the beta monkey double bass mania. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video as well for you guys to check out. Now, mixing, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. I actually did all my own mixing, guys. When I'm recording my music, I, I do the best I can to mix as I go. Because to me, if I'm recording something, obviously, you know, you can't do that in your initial tracks. <laughs> but if you're, if you're recording something, especially like uh, leads or stuff at the end, I want to hear the full mix as how it's going to be when it's released. You know what I mean? So I really try to keep my levels mixed across the board as I'm recording the project. That's just how I do that. I did all the mixing myself because, again, I was kind of a very low budget back in those days. Uh, so, you know, I used my headphones and just did the best I could mixing. Now, when it got to the mastering part, I was having some trouble with that, getting that industry standard loudness. So, I actually stumbled on this dude, Mike Olson. So, Mike, if you're watching this, thank you. Uh, Mike, he is, uh, he is really uh, did the mastering for all of my work, you know, up to this point. And again, I'm recording this in 2020 here. So, you know, that's what, four albums, one single at this point in time. So yeah, I sent it to him to master the album. He sent it back to me, I was very happy with it. And boom, we are done, but we're not. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna tell you this next piece, um, this is something I'll have to do a separate video on, but I actually uh, ended up releasing my album through a company called CD Baby. Because when you're, when you're done with your project, whether it's a single EP or album, you know, you want to get it out there to all those sources. You want it on Spotify, you want it on iTunes and, and uh, Google Play and Amazon and iHeartRadio and, and Pandora and, and all these places that people can hear you, your music on. You want it out there on the sources. Now, you can manually do that, but that's going to take some time and there's probably some bumps in the road you're going to hit along the way too. So. Uh, CD Baby, it's very reasonable to go through that. There's other sources like that as well that you can, I think Bandcamp's one and there's some several others out there. You can submit your song or EP or album to for a fee and they will put it out there basically to the world everywhere. So that's what I did. And again, I'll probably end up, if you guys are interested in that and going through that process, I can do a separate video on that at some point in time. So guys, that is how I recorded my very first album, Apocalyptic Dreams. Now, leave me any questions you have in the comments, please, because I know I went over a lot of things in this video. So if you have questions or, or comments, or if there's something I may have missed, because there's a good chance I did miss something, uh, leave that in the comments below and I'll be happy to you know, let's start a discussion about that because again, the whole point of this video was really to hopefully give you some some encouragement that hey, you know, if, if you want to release something, even if it's just a single, that it's doable. It's doable with a minimal budget and you know minimal gear. You do need pro gear. Don't get me wrong. You need it to sound good, but it doesn't have to be like the state of the art gear. You know, and you don't have to go spend ten grand in a professional studio. Listen, I've heard many albums done in pro studios from bands that have spent just thousands and thousands, and you listen to it and it's like, eh, I think you get a little screwed over because it, you know, I'm not going to tell them it sounds bad, but it's like, okay, you spent how much for this? Yeah, no. You can take the time to learn all this stuff yourself if you want to go that route, and I just think that's a more feasible route to go. And there's another thing too, um, why I do a lot of stuff myself, and it's because I don't want my albums, especially with metal, I don't want my albums to sound like every other metal album out there. And you really run the risk in doing that in the genre, the hard rock and metal genres. You've got all these producers and labels, and 
man, just the sound, there's just this, this thread of the same sound across the board. So if you want something different, you know, learn how to do a lot of this stuff yourself and learn how to mix along the way. You will need some help from time to time from other people that maybe are, are masters in certain areas like mastering. <laughs> I needed help in that. So I hired someone, I found someone that was, that was great at that. So yeah, do hire the right people for the right components, but also learn how to do as much as you can yourself. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support me, guys, I have a link to my shop, my CDs and uh, t-shirts, like this is my masterpiece t-shirt from my latest album. I'll show you my cool Keep It Metal mug again. Got a lot of cool stuff like that on my shop. So that's just a really, a really good way to support me in the channel here. And I deeply appreciate that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time. Keep it metal.